Hello! Today, Candy and I will be talking about monohybrid crosses. To begin, Candy and I went around Sonoma Academy asking the question, do you know what a monohybrid cross is? Here are the responses. A monohybrid cross? I do not know. No. No. I don't no. So I recognize it, but I don't. I don't, so. no. I don't know. <laughs> no. No. It's not off the top of my head, no. 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 What is it? Well, Cassandra, I am glad you asked. To begin, a quick history lesson. Gregor Mendel, who lived from 1882 to 1884, was a monk, plant lover, and scientist. He was interested in genetics and ended up being the founder of the modern science of genetics. This began by combining his love for pea plants. He decided to cross a green pea plant with a yellow pea plant to see what traits their offsprings would have. Wait! Time for a vocabulary break! Bum 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 bum! To clarify, a monohybrid cross is when two organisms mate and create offspring with different variations of genetic chromosomes, resulting sometimes in different physical attributes. Genes are what makes us who we are. They are represented with letters. Alleles are the parts of the gene in charge of characteristics, the individual letters. Homozygous is when two alleles are the same. The root word homo means same. Heterozygous is when the two alleles are different. The root word hetero means different. Dominant traits are represented by the capital letters, representing alleles that when crossed, they are more likely to appear. Recessive traits are represented by the lowercase letters, representing alleles that when crossed are less likely to appear. Genotype is the combination of the alleles themselves, the genetic variation. Phenotype is the physical result of the combination of alleles, also what we look like. Now to get back to Mendel and his peas. He began by trying to cross a green pea plant with a yellow pea plant. As a result, he got four green plants, telling us that the green trait of the pea is dominant over the yellow trait. In the second generation, with these new pea plants, when they were crossed and gave offspring, he was given three pea plants and one yellow plant. So this helped him figure out the beginning of inheritance. Now we will move on to a new example. Let's say that there are two types of pigs. One is a mom with long hair and one is a dad with short hair. The short hair trait is dominant over the long hair trait, being represented with a capital H. The short hair trait is recessive, being represented with a lowercase letter h. To see the likelihood of their children easier, we use a Punnett square to figure out their genotypes. We are then given a 100% chance of heterozygous piggies, meaning their phenotype, or physical appearance, will be all short-haired. In the second generation, it will be a little different. Since all the offspring are heterozygous, their possibilities for children are very different. They can be homozygous dominant, two capital H's, or homozygous recessive to lowercase h's, both having a 25% chance, as well as heterozygous, which is a 50% chance. This means in terms of phenotype, there is a 75% chance of short hair and a 25% chance of long hair. Now, in the third generation, since there are so many possibilities of offspring, there are more possibilities of phenotype. In the first combination of the third generation, the parents' genotypes are homozygous dominant and heterozygous. As a result, we have a 50% chance for their genotypes to be either homozygous dominant or heterozygous, with a 100% chance of short hair. In the second combination of the third generation, we have genotypes of heterozygous and homozygous recessive. As a result, we have a 50% chance of heterozygous and homozygous recessive then the phenotype would be a 50% chance of short hair and a 50% chance of long hair. In the third possibility of the third generation, both parents' genotypes are heterozygous. So their kids, just like in the second generation, have a 25% chance of homozygous dominant and recessive, and a 50% chance of heterozygous, which leaves a 75% chance of short hair and 25% chance of long hair. 
Now it's practice time. Let's say a florist wanted to breed a white flower and red flower and wants to know his chances of getting each type. The red color is dominant, with the alleles being a capital R. The white flower is recessive, with the alleles being a lowercase r. On the left, you can see the parent's genes, a heterozygous and a homozygous recessive. Now we want you to set up the Punnett square practice problem. Pause the video now and press play once you have completed your square. As you can see, we place the heterozygous on top with the dominant alleles first, then the homozygous recessive on the side. As a result, we get two heterozygous and two homozygous possibilities. So what does this mean in terms of genotype and phenotype? For the genotype, if the florist were to cross these flowers, there is a 50% chance of heterozygous and a 50% chance of homozygous recessive. This then means that in terms of phenotype, the florist has a 50% chance of getting a red flower and a 50% chance of getting a white flower. Now, time for some real life examples. In my family, this is Ilana by the way, my father was born with blue eyes. My mother was born with brown eyes. Having blue eyes is a recessive trait with brown eyes being dominant. For my father's parents, his mom has green eyes and his dad has brown, but his dad's mom has light eyes, making his genotype heterozygous, meaning my dad's eyes are homozygous, with two lowercase e's representing the recessive light color. My mother's parents both have brown eyes, meaning she has homozygous dominant. This then left to my eye color. At birth, my eye color was blue, but turned to hazel later on in life, meaning that I have a heterozygous genotype. genotype. The reason why it changed to a darker color is due to environmental factors that turn the lighter, more sensitive color to a darker, more protective color. My sister has brown eyes, but they are similar where they are a lighter shade of brown instead of a deeper, darker color.